you guys are not going to believe what I'm about to show you. Maybe some of y'all have heard of His Dark Materials. This was just brought to my attention recently. Uh, we had heard about in the past this movie called The Golden Compass. Started out from a, a children's book. Think about that. This is a children's book. Look at this slide here. This is from Scholastic Books. And look, it says that the age is from seven. It's ages uh, 12 and up, but it's grades seven and up. So this, this book is for children. This is the Scholastic Book website. Now look what it says about it. Look, read the description. It says, published in 40 countries. So this is getting out to the world. It says, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, San Francisco Chronicles, Book Sense, and Publishers Weekly bestseller list. This is not some small thing in the corner. We talk about a lot of media on this show. And we don't talk about things that are like niche up in the corner somewhere. We're talking about mainstream stuff. When we talk about anime and video games and all these things, we purposely choose mainstream things because we're like, look, this is what the world is accepting. This is what the world is consuming at large. Bestseller book. Remember that for children. It says readers meet 11 year old Lyra. So her name is Lyra. She's 11 years old. That is a young age child. It says in Lyra's world, everyone has a personal demon. Now that word, everyone has a personal demon. This is mind blowing. A lifelong animal familiar. I'm thinking of the Bible when it says a familiar spirit. Because a demon is a spirit that appears to you as something familiar. A dead loved one. An animal friend. In this movie, in these books, children have demon friends. Lifelong companions. It says, This is a world in which science, theology, and magic are closely intertwined. What do you call the what do you call the 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 idea of science and theology being together? That's alchemy. So this is literally magic and sorcery and it's talking about theology and science and magic. It goes on to say in the second book and it's in protecting her that he becomes a murderer. So the main character in this book becomes a murderer he's trying to protect his mother but the fact that like if you were looking for a book to read to your children would you read one about children who have demon friends and in the next book he's a murderer think about this this is insanity in the third book it says the painful price lyra must pay to walk through the land of the dead the haunting power of dr malone's amber spyglass and the names of who will live and who will die for love and all the while war rages with the kingdom of heaven a brutal battle that in its shocking outcome will reveal the secret of dust notice this is a war against the kingdom of heaven and it's about this dust what is this dust we're going to find out the war is against heaven so here's a book that was based off of the movie, The Golden Compass. This movie came out in, I don't know, 20, 2009 or something like that. And this book, oh, it says right here, 2007. So the movie came out in 2007. They made a book about it. Notice it says Scholastic under there. This is the movie that says every child has a demon. Listen to this video clip. That's odd. She acted as though she'd never seen a person's demon before. Come on, Pan. You're never alone. You always have this companion for life who is every other facet of you. Everybody has this animal, a demon, which represents their inner person, who they are. People can talk with their demons. As a child, your demon is able to take whatever form it wants to. Pan really is the mirror, you know, they're the mirror image of, of Lyra. I think having a demon is like it's your heart walking side by side by you. I think the demon is the voice inside your head, your sort of gut feeling. The worst thing that could happen is that someone would take your demon away from you. And the most terrifying thing would be to see a human being without their demon. It's not a pet, it's you. It will follow you and it will do it your movements and it will feel what you feel. Isn't that crazy? The demon will feel what you feel. This is your lifelong companion and the worst thing you could ever imagine. 
is taking a child's demon away from them. He said, it's scary to even see somebody without a demon. He said, because it's like seeing somebody without, without a head. This is insanity. This is what is being fed to the masses right now. And used to, this has been going on for a long time. This, this storyline, this Gnostic plot has been going on for a long time, but usually it was sugar-coated, it was hidden and all these symbols and esoteric. But now, at least ever since 2005, we have a movie for children that says, every child has a demon. It's your best friend. And the worst thing is if it gets taken away. So now this book, these book, this series of books uh, have become a series on HBO called His Dark Materials. Has anyone heard of this? His Dark Materials, my demon. Notice the spelling of demon. It's D-A-E-M-O-N. But we just heard in the clip that it's pronounced demon. One might look at this and say, no, this isn't, this isn't a demon like you're thinking. This is something different. Well, let's look at what, where this word comes from. When you look in the dictionary for demon, spelt this way, you can see the synonym says demon. You can see at the bottom it says archaic spelling of demon. So the word that we use, D-E-M-O-N, that's just the new spelling for an old word that had the letter A in it, but it's still the same word. You can go on further to see the pronunciation is demon and see where it says our demon and demon pronounced the same. It says the word demon is an alternative spelling of demon. And here it says that this was in the, in the mid since in the mid 16th century, the common spelling of demon. So in the 16th century, it was spelt with an A, but this is literally a demon. Yes, the demons that you read about in the Bible, the ones that possess people. But no, they're your best friend in this series. Something that children are reading and watching and now has become a, a show on HBO. And one of the characters in this show is an angel named Zaf Zafania. Zafania. And it says, Zafania was the leader of the rebel angels who allied with Lord Azrael in the war against the authority. Look at this picture. What are you seeing? Are you seeing an angel of light? The Bible tells us that Satan transforms himself as an angel of light, and they're not even hiding it, that that's who this is, the angel of light. Notice it says that the gender is female. So I was thinking, well, in Gnosticism, which this is what this is, when the Bible is inverted, flipped on its head, Gnosticism. In Gnosticism, there was a female entity who was named Sophia. So when we look at this website, Sophia it says, In Gnosticism, the fall didn't occur through Adam and Eve. It happened before the world's creation through a mistake made by a heavenly being called Sophia, whose name in Greek for wisdom. Remember, it was the serpent who said, eat this fruit and your eyes will be open. God doesn't want you to eat it because you'll be wise. You'll be as God. This is the exact, that Sophia is Lucifer in Gnosticism. It goes on to say, Sophia was one of the eons, divine entities who were the descendants from God, the father, and who were roughly equivalent to angels. So, yeah, Sophia is a fallen angel, and she fell before mankind fell. That's Lucifer. Lucifer fell before mankind fell. That's why he was cast to earth. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Every interaction with this video helps this video get out. Give it a thumbs up. Put a comment that just says amen, whatever. Thank you guys so much. Now, authority. Notice we, we saw that they were going to war. This angel of light is going to war with authority. He's She is the leader of the rebellious angels. Now, who is authority? Notice on the side over here where it says aliases. It says God, the Creator, the Lord, Yahweh, El, Adonai, the King, the Father, the Almighty. Do we have any question who this is? There is no question who this is that this angel of light is going to war with Yahweh, the creator, known as the authority in this series. Now watch the, the intro for season three because this series has been out for a couple years now, but season three just dropped days ago. 
Now this is going to fill you in. This is an intro. It's going to fill you in on the, the story of what's going on. Listen closely. For many millennia, the authority has ruled in the kingdom of heaven with absolute control. He named himself the creator, the father, the almighty. He is none of those, but just an angel like ourselves. And he rules with the dark angel by his side. We who fought for truth were cast out of the kingdom. Since then, we have lived between the worlds, watching and waiting for vengeance. A spark of hope is alive among humankind. A bold leader is rallying warriors. He may be mortal, but his ambitions transcend his kind. A serpent has been summoned. A new eve emerges. The time for a new rebellion is coming. A new rebellion. Time for a new rebellion to come. They said that these angels were cast out of heaven because the creator who calls himself the creator, we just saw that that was Yahweh, that he's just an angel, no different than us. Isn't that what Lucifer said? That I will ascend. I will be like the Most High. You're no better than me. You can eat that fruit. You can be like God. We can be like God. That is Luciferian doctrine. This is Satanism pushed as entertainment to children. This is season three. They're waiting before they give their agenda. This is for children as, as young as 12. The rating of this thing is 12 and up. The books are based on an 11-year-old girl. This is in your scholastic books. Your children are reading this material. Your children are watching these things. And it's literally satanic propaganda. We're living in the last days when good is evil and evil is good. When there's going to be an army, a satanic army. When Satan is going to brainwash the masses into siding with him and fighting against God. Imagine if this generation is consuming things like this, playing video games like Bayonetta, where you're a witch fighting angels, where you're fighting God, and you're watching all these movies that make God look like the tyrannical villain, and they're not reading the Bible. This is all they're consuming. It's not far-fetched to think about that very soon there is going to be a literal war against God, against Christians, that we are living in the last days, that Jesus is coming soon. And I can see it clearly when people are consuming junk like this and watching shows like Lucifer and heroes like Hellboy, when Christianity is mocked and ridiculed and Christ's name is blasphemed like a cuss word, but yet Lucifer is looked at like some ladies man and the savior of the world and Venom is a hero and he literally possesses people. This website, Den of Geeks, said his dark materials. What is the prophecy about Lyra? So it is a, a prophecy involved. And it says the short answer, save the world. Because they said, what is her purpose? The short answer is to save the world. The long answer, save the world from the magisteriums that plan to destroy dust. That's what, that's what we're trying to find out. What is dust? The mysterious, largely invisible substance that surrounds adults after they go through puberty. In Lyra's world, children have no dust, only attracting it once they, be once they become adults and their demon settles into its, into its final form. It can't be seen with the naked eye, only through specialist pho pho photographic lenses. The Magisterium thinks dust, the Magisterium, this is the people of heaven, think that dust because of its association with sexual desire. A children's book, remember, dust has an association with sexual desire is the manifestation of original sin, which they believe cursed humanity after Eve succumbed to temptation in the Garden of Eden. So heaven, the authority and the people that work for him, the magisterium, they think this dust that is found on adults but not on children is associated with sin because it has to do with sex. Then it goes on to say the Magisterium and Mrs. Coulter seek to cleanse humanity of sin by ridding the world of dust. Sounds like a positive thing. Christ is going to cleanse the world of sin. I want to be in that place. Hence their brutal experiments slicing demons away from children. I want demons to be, I want children to be free from demons. Yet this is painted like it's a terrible thing. 
slicing demons away from children before they go through adolescence. Their experiments leave children a dying husk, barely alive after being separated from their soul, as seen in the case of the TV adaptation's poor Billy Costa. So when their demon is removed from them, they're just an empty shell, dying away. They have no soul anymore because that demon was the soul of the child. It says the witch's prophecy. Notice the prophecy comes from the witches, not the Bible. Completely inverted. The witch's prophecy heard from the whisperings of angels traveling between worlds position Lyra as the new Eve of Christian mythology. So we're not associating something that's that they're not associating with. We're not saying, oh, Eve, that's like the Bible. And somebody can say, no, Eve is just a name. They're telling you it's from the Bible. That Lyra is going to be the new Eve. Like Eve in the Garden of Eden, Lyra will be presented with a choice that will determine humanity's ongoing relation to dust, which is seen in various, in, in, uh, vi variously as sin by the church. Now, the church sees dust as sin, but she is going to save humanity, and it has something to do with this dust. Keep track here. And sentenced by Philip Pullman, that's the creator of these books, as or and his non-evil characters. Dust is what makes humans able to think and act for themselves, which is why the all-powerful magisterium wishes to suppress it to maintain their control over people. So this dust that's on people that the church says, oh, it's sin, and the magisterium, the people that work for the authority in heaven, they want to get rid of the dust because they think it's sin, but it's really something that makes you be able to think for yourself. Mm. It says, unknowingly, Lyra will make a choice, and that choice will change the world, the great war about which Serafina Pecola warns Lee Scoresby in the TV series will be between the magisterium and those fighting to protect human freedom and consciousness, also known as dust. Remember what it said dust was associated with? Sexual desire? So literally, this 11-year-old girl is fighting to save humanity as prophesied by the witches to protect the dust of sexual desire. How sick can we get? How, more, how much more debased can this humanity get to the point where we're in the days of Noah, where the thoughts of their heart were only evil continually? How come this world keeps putting together children associated with sexual content? What is happening here? Where are we at? The last part of this says, this part of his dark materials books is inverted retelling of Paradise Lost by John Milton in the 17th century epic poem from which the book trilogy title was taken. Milton's poem tells the story of fallen angel Satan after his banishment to hell and his plot to corrupt mankind by tempting Eve in the Garden of Eden to lead humanity into sin by eating an apple from the tree of knowledge. According to the prophecy, Lyra, like Eve, will be tempted and her choice will determine the future of humanity. Will she, will she, and will finally rid the world of dust or preserve it? What do you think? I'm going to go ahead and make a prediction that I believe she's going to protect the dust. I, If I was a betting man, I'd put a lot of money on it. I guarantee that she is going to protect the dust that's associated with sexual desire and is looked at as sin because... They say it's actually about free will. It's about freedom of thought and consciousness. Of course, this 11-year-old girl is going to save and protect dust, the sin of the world. Here's an interview with the writer, Paulman, and listen to what he says. One friend who's a Christian said he enjoyed his dark materials very much when he was a child, but, but he found them very unsettling to his beliefs. Yeah. Um, well, what's your, what was your intention? It's pointless to ask a writer what their intention was, because A, they don't know, B, they'll tell you a story about it anyway, um, C, whatever it is, it'll be to their credit when they tell you. Uh, <laughs> um, clearly it matters. It matters to people. That, that very question matters to people. I had a lot of letters saying, especially after the first two books, but before the third one was that, who's good? Who's bad? Who should I cheer for? Who's the villain? I don't understand what's happening. 
Um, and my answer was always, well, wait till the story's over and then make your own judgment. I'm not going to judge it for you. I'm extremely interested in religion, always have been. I don't believe in a God, but the questions that religion poses and... He literally just said that he got so many letters about who's good, who's bad, who am I rooting for? He said, oh, I'm not going to tell you, just wait till the end. I can already tell you, I can tell you that God, the authority is bad and they're warring against it. And those fallen angels are painted as good heroes. They literally tell you in season three in this trailer, they say that we are fighting for justice and vengeance against the authority. We're fighting for freedom, a new rebellion. These are not the words of me. This is the words out of the writer's mouth. This is insane what we are indulging in. Now, here's an article that says, as for the new TV series, the makers are very keen to the stress, are, are very keen to stress that it isn't anti-Christian. In what way is this not anti-Christian? Christianity is based on what? The Bible, the word of God. We are followers of Christ. We are Christian because of the Bible. And what is this, what is this series saying? That our God... Yahweh, the creator, is a tyrannical villain, and the rebels who were cast out are, are going to uh, find a girl to or anybody, some human, to help them fight in this rebellion. This is what the Bible talks about. This is what is going to happen in the last days. Look what they say. It doesn't equate to any particular church or form of religion in our world, so we should be clear on that. So they're saying, look, 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 this is all just kind of a metaphor. The, don't 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 look at that his name is Yahweh and and don't look at this fallen angel as helping humanity to fight against you know the creator it's all just a metaphor it's not even about a church don't it's not even about a religion really it says however the holy church in quotes in his dark materials which is described in less than flattering terms does closely mirror the catholic church albeit one in which the famously non-Catholic John Calvin was a pope and the papacy has since been replaced with institutions collectively known as the magisterium. So the magisterium is loosely based on the Catholic church. And Pullman, the writer, said Pullman has uh, also been outspoken about his views on the Catholic church, saying in 2010, in one way, I hope the wretched organization will vanish entirely. You know, I, I can't really argue with this statement. But the thing is, is when when people think of Christianity, what's the first thing that comes to their mind? The Catholic Church or a mega church? That's what the world thinks of as church. And so whether they're saying this is not about church or not about religion, they're literally saying that the creator Yahweh is the enemy and that this dust upon people that's associated with sexual desire is something to be embraced. And it's really not bad. And so we're going to have an 11-year-old girl protect that substance and save the world. Oh, my. I hope that this is clear. I hope you guys stay far away from this. There were so many clips that I just didn't have time to include that just make it so much more obvious, so much more disturbing of what's happening here. But we are living in the time of 1 Timothy 4.1. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh, speaketh expressly, that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Where do you think people are going to get doctrines of devils from? Do you think demons are manifesting and, and talking to people? Probably not. They're probably getting them from people who are inspired through dreams and visions and automatic writing and channeling and writing books like this by this guy who said, oh, I don't, I'm not going to tell you who's evil and who's, who's good and I'm not going to go into all that. This isn't really this isn't really about what it clearly says it's about. It's really some kind of metaphor. These are doctrines of devils, literally, that are deceiving the world. And the Bible says that in the latter times where we're living, some will de depart from the faith, meaning they were raised in the faith. If you were, are raising your children in the faith, in the church, they may depart due to this content. They may depart giving heed to seducing because this stuff looks so fun and entertaining. It's seducing. It's hypnotic. That's what this is talking about. People falling away from the faith. 
Revelation saw three unclean spirits working miracles. These doctrines of these performing miracles. And it says they're going forth to the kings of the earth. When Christ, there's going to be an army of people ready to fight against him. How do you think we're going to get to that point? It's things like this. It's the, the repetitive lie, the repetitive propaganda that God is the enemy. He's Thanos. He's an alien invader. He's watching these things is having an effect on Avatar. And he said, I put my agendas in there. I, did, I used every trick. I, I used it as a Trojan horse to change your belief system. This is happening on, on all sides with the video games like Bayonetta. There's, there's so many angles that the enemy is to help you. No, Satan is like, ha, a distraction. I'm going to make everything. Look at all this stuff and fill your mind and infiltrate. And he uses every trick. He uses deception. He, he's a trickster. He's a deceiver. A lot of truth with a little bit of error. Notice that we're not making these things about the Bible. We get accused of that all the time. Why do you always got to make everything about the Bible? Would you send an email to this guy? That's what should be done. Let's start writing everything about the Bible. Making it about the Bible. Bayonetta, why are you making it about the Bible? Psalm 101.3, we say this verse a lot. It says, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. Let's heed to this verse. Let's follow what his word says. He says, do not set any wicked thing before your eyes. He's not trying to keep us from having fun. It's from being deceived in these last days when the disciples asked him, what will be the sign of your coming? He said, beware that no man deceive you. It was always about deception. There's going to be many false Christs. There's going to be this and that. Don't be deceived. Keep your eyes fixed on the word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We have to be in his word and eating it like we do bread every day. I hope this was eye-opening. I hope you guys stay away from this stuff, and I hope you guys share this with everyone you know because I don't want anyone to be deceived by this garbage. We are living in the last days. It's so clear. Spread this like wildfire. Give it a simple and free thumbs up. It really helps support this ministry. If you're not a subscriber, click that subscribe button, click the bell, and also share this with all your family and friends and leave a comment. Even if it just says amen, it helps us out, and we like responding to you guys. So we will see you guys next time.